Okay, so we're back. We have uh, measured uh, the things that we need to build into this uh, sink, which is the uh, sink hole and the tap. And the tap needs a hole, a mounting hole of uh, 40 millimeters, four centimeters. And uh, the sink hole needs a hole that is 47 wide, was it? Yeah, 4.7 centimeters and uh, 30 centimeters high because that's how the sinkhole has been designed. So we need to start then with uh, mounting the tap, I would say. So what we need then is the top surface of our project. So I'm gonna just take this, I'm gonna duplicate it and then I'm gonna move it onto the top like so about, and then I'm going to adjust it to exactly where it should be, 9.5. Seems about right. Yeah. Um, it would be nice actually with a little edge, a high, a higher edge around everything. So I'm going to lower this. I'm going to lower this to 9.2. Then we have a 3 millimeter um, edge on top here, around everything, like a frame. I think that could look actually pretty neat. And of course, we're not going to have it this big then. Um, I needed a hole for the tap that is 40 uh, millimeters wide. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a cylinder that will represent this hole. So a cylinder with uh, 40 wide in, in both directions. And then of course, height wise, I don't know, that probably doesn't matter much, but uh, we probably should have it stick to at least, I think two centimeters is good. All right, now now we're doing uh, we're doing this right. We're not having millimeters; we're having centimeters. Yeah, so there it is. So that is our hole that's going to represent the tap. And I would like to have the tap up here in the corner, about like that, with about a centimeter to spare on either side. So let's see what happens if we take this to minus 4 and 11. Oh, looks about right. Looks like a side between there. Oh, this needs to be probably a little further away. So 4.5 maybe. Yeah, that looks better. Now it looks like you can fit one of these sides between here. So how are we on height? Now it needs to go down a lot. Uh, we want uh, we want to use this as I said. It's a hole. It's going to be a hole. Uh, so what we need to do is we need to start first defining everything that should be visible in our object should be a positive. So everything we want to keep in our box should be positives. So we define them as positives. And then the hole. That's what we want to cut away from our positives. So we're going to take this and we're going to define it as a negative. Now what happens is when you define a positive object with a negative object is that the, the program will only keep the positive bits that are not covered by a negative bit. So if I have this as a negative, you see it changes, it's becoming dotted instead of a, a solid line. And then I know that this top already is one centimeter, so I'm just going to move this down because I know this is two centimeters. Um, so now I can see that it's actually covering these two centimeters, are actually covering the whole centimeter of the top here. So if I now combine these or group them here, group, and then I ray trace it again, you can see that we get a hole there. So that's good, but we're going to undo that because we don't want to have the sink just with a hole and nothing else. Uh, we're gonna start moving this top now away to about one centimeter going that way as well. Uh, could that be a centimeter maybe? No, wrong button. Yeah, so we need to have this minus 11 and 
this is one centimeter high. We already know that, but we need to know where it should be. Yeah, that looks about right. So now, if we group everything like so, and then we ray trace it, we get a little better uh, picture of the wanted end result. Now, of course, there's a wall missing from this top down to the bottom here, so we need to fix that. I'm gonna keep this like so, instead of moving it back, uh, because I want somewhere where you can place a soap bar, for example. So let's make this little wall here. We can already use uh, an object from our side here and just move it. Yep. Wrong way, this way. So to about there. And then we see it doesn't align perfectly here, so we need to go into the attributes again and check why. This is probably 7.5. Yeah, that looks pretty neat. And then, of course, we can see it touches. It goes into this wall, it goes into this wall, and it goes into the bottom and the top. So we need to appropriately shut this uh, object uh, extreme dimensions down, uh, shrink them down to minus 1, minus 1, Minus one, and here we had something like zero, uh, one point three or something like that. So let's start with these fifteen. Yeah, that's correct. We need to move it up one. Yep, yeah, move it up one. Oops. So position six then. So you see, it goes there. Oh, that's actually yeah, that is that is correct. And then let's wing it. Start by winging it. Let's go down there about, and then we know it should be a little shorter. So it's probably 7.5, and probably seven point, uh, 4 .5 and 7.5. Uh, no, now we're missing half a centimeter. So we probably need to increase the size of this to, wait, let's see if it's still touching the bottom. It looks like. No, it goes actually into the bottom, as you can see. And we don't want that. We want to increase this. So the position then is probably five or seven. Let's see. Five. Yeah, then it touches perfectly with uh, with the top there. As you can see. Oh, actually, we need to move it down a little, little. Uh, I think it's easier if we move this down to the nearest plane there. And we just increase this one a little. There it looks like it touches. So what do we have now? Yeah, so this is probably 7.8-ish then, and this is probably 7.65. Or could it actually be an up a little 7.7 then? Well, it went up. Oh, size, sorry. My bad. Let's see, 7. Uh, let's say 7.7, seven, seven, and then move this up instead of 7.9, 4.9. Oh, 85 then. Zoom in and see what we have. Yeah, this one touches edge to edge, and this one looks like it does the same. So yeah, this is the correct measurements. Now I just need to move this in to into here. So it's just one more centimeter out, which should be this one. So 8.5. Yeah, typical. Now let's see. It, Ah, uh, this doesn't touch there, so that's good. We still have the uh, everything intact here. To avoid any, you know, screws getting into the way of this wall here, or this wall getting into the way of the opposite, um, we should probably keep this, actually. So we move it back to that centimeter it was, and then we just extend this top instead. to 7, 5, and 7, like so, because now we still have clearance for any um, tightener uh, that we need to get onto the, uh, the tap. There's probably a tightening nut included in the in the tap that we need to screw onto the bottom from, from, from the bottom side. 
uh, to keep it all in place. And then we need a little clearance, of course, around it. Um, one centimeter on each side should do fine. Now the problem is, of course, that we don't have the hole, you know, symmetrically. As you can see, it's one centimeter here and, and two here. But I think we need to live with that. And I think we can live with that. It's fine. All right. Now we just need a hole for the sink. So we just copy this hole that we already done. And then we can move this to the bottom here somewhere, like so. Uh, we know that this hole needed to be 30 uh, high and 47 wide. So, and because we are dealing with a negative now, we know that the bottom needs to be 30 and the hole needs to cut out more than 30 high from the positive material that we're going to make the bottom of. At the moment the bottom is only one centimeter but we need to make it three centimeter. So this needs to cut out three or more centimeters. So I'm putting 3.5 is good. Oh, actually I'm going to take four and then I'm going to place this at two in height because then I know uh, we can see it like this. It's always above the plane. But of course, in the end, it's going to have the same uh, said coordinate, height coordinate, uh, as the uh, the bottom uh, wall. So what we're going to do now, we're going to actually extend this bottom wall. Select that. And we're going to increase it to 3 in thickness. And then we need to increase the height position of it as well to match there. So this is a very, very thick uh, bottom we have now. Um, that's how it is. Can't really change that. But we have the, the height position on this for one and a half. So we're going to have height position of our hole at one and a half. Then we're sure that it cuts all the way through. Okay. And then it's about placement. Where do we want to place our hole? And I think let's place it neatly somewhere. Let's actually place it over here. I think that could look pretty good. Uh, and then we need, of course, to change this again. Uh, accidentally move this in height. And then minus 0 0.5 and uh, 2.5 and nothing there should be in the center, like so. So now again, then if we select everything and we group it up, we have a hole in our sink. Now, this is not the optimal sink, of course, because now it's the flat bottom. And, and flat bottom, you know, the water is not going to go anywhere. It's going to stick to a corner or just on top here if we have it perfectly centered and leveled. Uh, if, and if you drop a drop of water here, it's not going to go in there because it's not, um, it, it doesn't have a gradient uh, for the, the water to flow in. Um, a fall, a natural fall. So now we need to take this decision. Should, should we have a natural uh, fall or not? And I think actually we should, um, at least to some extent. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just ungroup this again, like so. And I'm going to keep this bottom as it is. And then I'm going to take a copy of this bottom. So I'm just going to select the bottom. Oh, this is not going to extend all the way here, of course. So we need to have an opening uh, so we can get to the uh, water hoses up to the sink. So there must be a hole down here. This must all be just an empty space. So I'm going to change this. I'm going to put this to 22, I believe. And this is probably going to be 3 then. Yeah. And now we see that this wall that we did before is cutting into this or overlapping and we don't want that so we're gonna do it like that we can select that move it up to about there let's see what we have five eight five seven five uh, no i need 
is to probably go down to 5 8 on bombs. Oh, there we go. Oh, it still cuts in. Okay, so we need to make it a little shorter then. So, 5 7. And then up. Ah, there we got it. Or do we? Yeah, this tights. Yeah, this stands on top of that. And yeah, that's perfect. That works. Now we can see that these align perfectly. And so it does on the top here. These lines here. Alright. Let's zoom out again. That's fixed. Okay. So, right. We were to copy this one. So we're selecting that. Copying it. Pasting it. Now we're actually gonna angle this a little. So we get the water to flow down at least that from this side down there. Still gonna be hard to fix this part, but we can leave that. It's fine. So what we're gonna do then is we're gonna have it about there. And then we're gonna put this, drag it into here again. Now here we don't have any choice to have another positive object go into <coughs> another positive object. As you can see, this goes into the original bottom, and this one also goes into the uh, side here uh, of the original side. And uh, can't really do much about that. Um, and, but since we're not having any negatives cutting away into this positive and the positives that it is uh, overlapping, then it should not be a problem. So this is uh, an okay trade-off. Let's just reset the positions of these. So we get it a little smoother and nicer and tighter and just generally looks better when you're looking at the uh, numbers. Okay, so there we have it. And oh, looks good. Yeah, looks good. Yeah, looks overall good. And then, of course, if we group all these again now, and we ray trace it, let's put a lamp on top so we can see in, down into this as well. I'm just going to create a little uh, lamp above this one. So when we ray trace it, it's getting lighted up. This actually looks not bad. Um, so it's quite decent, actually. Um, you can see the little gradient that we got here. So the water that drops into here can go nicely into the sink. Of course, around it, on these edges, it's not going to be a gradient, but I think we can live without it. Uh, just going to make sure that we don't have any gaps somewhere. No, it doesn't look like a gap there. So if we ray trace it from this side, oh, looks good. We have the little edge here around. I think that's a little nice touch, actually. Here we can see the uh, gradient. Oh, it was good that we checked, because this, when you can see this edge, it means that this object is a little bit too high compared to this object. Uh, and this is going to cause a line when we 3D print it, which we really don't want. So we're going to just adjust that quickly. All right, I have... Let's un ungroup it, and then just pick this. And then we can do it two ways. Either we lower it, or... Yeah, we have to lower it. We don't have much choice. So let's say that it's 2.95 instead. No, that's the size. Damn. Sorry about that. Position, 1.95. 99 maybe, because it wasn't that big. Ah, uh, we can't see any difference. Okay, let's take 95. There. Now we can see it's definitely under. So if we zoom in here on this little thing, you can see this edge here is lower than this edge. So now it will actually look okay. So let's zoom out again. I think I accidentally removed the uh, light. Yep. Let's group these. Let's put back the light. Then we zoom in. And we just retrace it again. Yeah, now you can't see this. You can see a little, little, but I think this is more to do with the, the ray tracing engine that gives out this. So, yeah, there's our sink. I'm actually quite pleased with this result on this short time. Um, 
now we just need to uh, to prep it for uh, 3D printing. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to export this object. So I'm going to select it. I'm going to export object. Uh, where are we? Do, 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 do. All right. Uh, before I export it, I need to cut it and simplify it into just one object because now it's still a group of objects. But now I need to um, convert it into just one object. So then I'm pressing the uh, C here. I honestly don't know what C stands for in this program, but let's say it stands for convert. So because that's actually what we're doing. We're converting the object from a bunch of primitives into just one solid object. There's no going back on this stage. Well, we can take like Control Z. Of course, now we can do to get back to all our objects. But if we save it in this state, then we have no possibility of reverting back to all the primitives that is built up from later. So before I'm cutting that or converting that, I'm going to save it. I haven't saved this object yet. So projects, I'm going to sync. Then I'm going to sync the object. Priced 7, save. Now I'm going to cut it or convert it like so. It's still the same object, just looks different in, in, in wireframe. So as you can see, it's still the same. Now I can export this uh, into um, a format that I need to send to NetFab to make sure that this uh, object is repaired and proper to use with a 3D print. Uh, so this is something I do for all my items, uh, just to be on the safe side. So I'm going to export this object. Sync. I'm going to save it as a wavefront object file, obg, obg, uh, sync. Dot obg. It's just a, a common uh, format for 3D objects. So I'm saving that, and then I'm just Control Z uh, to undo that I converted it, just in case I accidentally press save again and don't know it, and I exit the program, then I have lost all this primitives uh, data. Then I only have this wireframe, the new wireframe, and then I can't do any adjustments in case I need to. So we're actually done uh, with uh, the Bryce part. Uh, and uh, the next part is to uh, pass it through NetFab. I'm going to show you how to do that in the next video. So let's get to it. Cheers.